Hey guys, welcome back to the Dental Momentum Podcast here. Jared Duckett again with my business partner, Bill Ladd. And guys, we've got a special treat for you today. Um, we've got our good buddy, Jay Owen with Design Extensions, founder and CEO of Design Extensions, a digital marketing and website design company out of Florida. Jay, we appreciate you joining us, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to uh, be on the show and see how I can help. Definitely. Well, I tell you what, you are a busy, busy guy, and I'm going to get this kind of out of the way right at the beginning, because uh, I know you talk a lot with Bill, but I follow you on social media, which you're all over the place, you do a great job of that, but what are you getting ready to do, Jay? What are you doing tomorrow? I mean, I hear some, some things. Is it true? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, it's a wild uh, adventure right now. So I have five kids. They range in age from seven to 15. And we just sold our house and our new house is not done yet. So we were trying to figure out something fun to do as an adventure for our family. Um, our company cruise that we were supposed to be doing next week got canceled thanks to this whole COVID thing. And we, my wife said, what if we just rent an RV and like go around the whole country? And I'm like, all right, let's just do it. <laughs> and so we rented an RV. I just picked it up yesterday, actually. And uh, we are going to be gone for 33 nights. Uh, we're going to go up to the Grand Canyon, up to Glacier National, and then kind of all the way back down, plus a bunch of stops in between. And we're kind of winging it. We've never done this before. It's going to be pretty tight quarters with seven people total, um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I think the kids will remember it for a long time, and it matters a lot to me. So, so after this COVID-19, you guys haven't had enough togetherness, Jay? You actually <laughs> need to get in a smaller spot and spend more time together, two months. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you know, my kids uh, are homeschooled anyway, so... Uh, they're used to being home all the time, and we're used to being kind of around them a lot more than maybe some people are. So that was a little <laughs> right. bit of an advantage for us going into the crisis. I'm pretty sure I would kill my children if uh, I, was <laughs> I stuck think I would too. If I was well, I like I like how you position that, Jay, because you said it was your wife's idea, right? Yeah. So if this doesn't work <laughs> out right, just just blame it on her, right? That's not wise, but yes. That's and, awesome. I, and I think we were talking beforehand. What's really cool, Jay, is you've told us that you're going to completely unplug for two months. Is that right? No, a month. No, no, I'm sorry. No, two, weeks. two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, my bad. Maybe two more weeks after that. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, well, we'll see. Two weeks, basically, you're going to be away from your, your business. And, you know, that's, that's pretty impressive. That tells me you set up systems and processes that really are going to be uh, handy to allow your team to function without you. And that's going to give you a good opportunity to kind of recharge after this whole COVID-19 mess and get your head right. So that's, that's a pretty impressive uh, thing to be able to do. Well, you know, I, I remember seasons where I didn't even feel like I could take a day off. Yeah. Uh, I remember, you know, feeling like I always had to be connected to something, uh, email or phone or computer. And uh, one, one of my goals many, many years ago, I had probably been in business, gosh, I'm embarrassed to say, but probably almost a decade at that point. And I don't think I'd taken a whole week off. I mean, completely yeah. off. Like I'm not answering a text message. I'm not taking a business phone call. I'm not um, replying to emails. I'm not working on anything work-wise. I had not taken an entire week off. Um, I always bring a laptop with me, bring a phone with me. I think a lot of business owners have experienced that and feel like they have to. And so one of my big goals back then was I just want to be able to put the company in a place where I can leave for a week, come back, and it survive. Yeah. Um, now, my perspective has changed quite a bit. And it's not a week anymore. Now, the goal is a month. And now, instead of me saying I want the company to survive while I'm gone, I think words matter. Now, I say I want the company to thrive while I'm gone. That's a very different mm. thing. Um, and I think it's easy to feel like that's never going to be possible. I think a lot of small business owners feel like that, but it's not true. We know it's not true because you can look at somebody like Elon Musk, who's running Tesla and SpaceX and the Boring Company, and I don't know how much else. And I'm pretty sure that all those companies have a lot more going on than my 18-person marketing firm do. And somehow they figure out how to put processes, systems, and people in place so that they can focus on their highest and best intent and that's really what I've worked hard at over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's good stuff, Jay. Just jump in there. Tell us tell us a little bit about your business and then also tell us how you got to where you are today because I know you have a cool story for starting mm -hmm. this thing from scratch. Kind of jump in that and give us a, a brief synopsis of that story and how that works. Yeah, I mean, you know, growing a, a business of any kind, uh, it can be really hard and marketing especially can be confusing and expensive. And ultimately, our job is to help make it clear and effective so people can get attention and acquire customers. 
Um, that's what we focus on. So we're even changing kind of the methodology around the structure of the business from a thought process. I used to be a web design company way back in the day when I was a kid and, and we're like that for a while. And then we're kind of a, a marketing company and we're kind of a digital agency because we provide a lot of different things. Now really like the, the forward focus of 2021 and beyond will be on this idea of being a business growth agency. And it's, it's about how can we position ourselves to come alongside another business and help them have what they need to grow. And a lot of times that is going to be marketing and sales related services and software and things like that. Cause that's what we've specialized in for two decades. Um, but it, but it will be a little bit more encompassing than that. So I'm excited about that transition, but the, the beginning of the story was 21 years ago this month, actually. Um, I was 17 years old and I was a student at Nice high school. Uh, me and a buddy uh, built really bad little websites that we had done for years. I mean, I built my first website when I was 12, uh, wow. but I started the business when I was 17 and um, it was really more of a hobby than it was a business at the time. I mean, I think our total revenue in the first year was like $5,500. So that would not make me to lunchtime now uh, with the staff that we have. Uh, and now we do millions of dollars of sales every single year. Um, and much of it is recurring. I remember though, I remember seasons of wondering whether I'd have enough work just to keep me busy the whole week. And, um, you know, my wife was a big encouragement for me through those years to kind of follow my dream. I even shelved my dream for a little while and went and work in the insurance business. I don't encourage people to switch from the creative field to the insurance world because if you get too creative in insurance, you go to jail. Um, I didn't go to jail <laughs> for the record, but, um, but it wasn't for me. And I was able to follow my dream and do what I really wanted to do. And now I have a thriving business with a great team of people uh, who I'm completely confident that I can uh, get on that RV tomorrow uh, evening and drive away. And they don't need me. They really don't. I mean, maybe they do for like overall vision and growth and team structure and development and things that I really am best suited for, but they don't need me to run the day to day. They don't need me to run uh, even a 30 day cycle. And I'm, I'm excited about that because that, that wasn't even true probably three or four years ago. So, so you started your entrepreneurial journey really early and you know, you and I've talked a lot and Jared and, and us, we've all talked to I me, mean, you, you've learned a lot of lessons and you know, that's how, everybody's journey is and you know you really start to feel good you start to dial it in and earlier this year in March everything mm -hmm. changed it, it, in a week we can all remember that week when everything changed so walk us through through how that affected you Jay tell us about that week for you uh, you know when that hit and and what you experienced and, and what you saw there you know at first I think I just didn't know what to think like it, it was all so it's all so bizarre yeah. That it's just so different than anything that we've ever experienced in our lifetime. Maybe that, and then ever, I mean, certainly like we're talking about like a hundred year kind of thing, you know? And so you start to then look at the business and there's things that stood out to me. Like, for example, we have put so much um, emphasis on our recurring revenue. Well, you find out very quickly that your recurring revenue is only as good as the people who can still pay their bills. And if your customers or clients can't pay their bills then they can't pay you. And if you they can't pay you, I mean, this is how economies work, right? But you don't really think about that because we've been in such a good economic cycle for so long. And I think it was just a really strong reminder of doubling down on the principles that, uh, you know, I know that, that we believe in is the, you know, the ideas that people like Dave Ramsey espouse of, look, we need to stay out of debt or at least keep that debt as low and reasonable as we can. And certain businesses, it actually is a good idea for certain types of debt, but, but we need to be really mindful of that we need to be in a strong cash position. I mean, th yeah. these things are things that we all know these things, but when the rubber hits the road, you're like, Oh shoot. Okay. Well, where are we? You know, and now all of a sudden things that I used to track on a quarterly basis, I was tracking monthly and y'all were helping me with some of these things and the things that I tracked monthly, I'm now tracking in some cases daily because yeah. uh, I needed to keep my hand on the wheel. And so like right now I'm about to take two weeks off. I would have done that at the beginning of COVID. But, you know, I, I have my hands on the wheel. And the best example I can think of is, you know, in Florida, we get a lot of really bad thunderstorms and tropical storms and even hurricanes, stuff like that. And if you're out on the road in the middle of a really bad tropical storm, on a regular Florida day, which is why there's probably a lot of accidents, roads are flat, skies are clear, they're wide, there's plenty of room. You don't really have to pay that much attention. You're just kind of on autopilot down the road. If you have a Tesla, you're actually on autopilot, but you're just cruising down the road, not paying that much attention. But when that storm comes and it's blaring down, you can barely see the car in front of you. You got to put two hands on the wheel. And all of a sudden I'm driving again, like my 15 year old does, where he's like, okay, what's going on? Where are we at? You know, 10 and two eyes up, heads up, you know, paying close attention. And that's what happened with business. All of a sudden we're like, 
I, I used to be leaning back, have my hand on the wheel, kind of have my chair. I'm just kind of relaxed, got some good music on. Now all of a sudden I'm like, well, music off, hands on the wheel, pay attention, where are we going? And that's kind of how I felt, yeah. I think, through this season. Well, a 10-year run in the economy made a lot of people look really smart. And, yeah. and a lot of the business decisions got stress tested pretty quick. Yeah. And, you know, when we think about who we're talking to here today, dentists, and I know, you know, in your portfolio, you've dealt with dentists and you've seen them. These sure. guys were doing well and, and had, we were having one kind of conversation. And then overnight, their revenue went from 100% to zero to five or 10% at most. Yeah. And you can only imagine, you know, for us in our service type business, we were scared, but for, for those guys, they were terrified. And, yeah. and you want to talk about gripping the wheel very tightly, at least for our perspective, we had to really pivot our, our the, the types of services we were providing to those people, which is more of a, a hands-on uh, boots on the ground, daily, weekly contact instead of maybe that monthly. So walk us a little bit through how you kind of had to pivot your service offerings, Jay. I'm sure that people needed different things from you, you know, on advertising, marketing, mm -hmm. uh, people were looking at cutting overhead, but you know, what, what did you see during that time period? What, what, how did you kind of change your model at all? Well, the biggest thing that happened was a lot of our services became more communication heavy. So we were focused on like, how can we help our clients communicate well through this season? Because yeah, if we yeah. need to communicate when times are good, we got to like 10 X communicate when times are bad uh, with our own clients, with our prospective clients, with our community, with people around us. And so it was interesting. We're not really a PR company. The difference in a PR company, PR companies typically hand like outgoing communications. They kind of get people on the news. They do things like that. Um, that's not typically kind of our gig. It's we focus more on website development, social media, online ads, things like that. But we started to shift in a lot of those areas and also make sure clients had the right tools. I'll give you an example. We had a client uh, that's an orthodontist um, and uh, there's some great tools out there for some of these virtual um, checkups to kind of see what's going on, see if they need to be seen. Is this an emergency? Can we just give them some advice and some information? And even some of them, there's some great tools where they can even check their smiles online and really, really neat stuff. But we helped do the research to figure out his client wasn't that tech savvy, uh, did the research to help them figure out what they needed, help get those tools, help get those tools installed. And they actually acquired some new business that they would not have otherwise acquired in the midst of a season where you think you're not going to acquire a new orthodontics client. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of doing exactly what y'all did, which is looking around and going, hey, what do these people need? And, and how, are, how can we help with that? Um, and dentists, man, I mean, they, they had it really, really hard. And some of them are still trying to, you know, dig their way out of that because they've had giant longest gaps of no service that they've had in a long time or emergencies only. And then now some people are still scared to go in and um, there's, there's regulations around what has to be done. And every state's a little bit different, I know, too. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that makes perfect sense and kind of transition, you know, to, to how you pivoted your services how, how do business owners, do they need to look maybe at a change in messaging, like how they're communicating? I mean, you talk about how you communicate, you know, to their yep. patients, et cetera, but the message they're communicating, should, should they change that or, or how, how would that look? It, it depends, really. It depends on how good their messaging was to begin with. And I find most Great people, uh, most people's messaging um, is like my messaging used to be years ago, which is it's me focused. It's focused on what we do and how good we are and how we're going to help somebody else, but it's focused on us first. That's how most people's messaging is written because people used to come to me and they'd say, Hey Jay, we need your help to tell our story. And I'd say, great. Tell me a little bit about it. And they tell us and we just write it up nicer and then put it online. We've been in business since X, Y, or Z. And we've won these awards and we've done this. Now people come to me and they say the same thing. Hey Jay, I need your help to tell our story. And we say, no, you don't. You need our help to invite your customer into a story. Those are very different things. Because the story from a messaging perspective in marketing, especially your website or any kind of outgoing materials to prospective clients should be focused on who the character is, who, who, the, who the customer is, what they actually want. Now, now, again, it's not, they don't usually want just the service. They want the outcome of the service, right? Nobody wants insurance. They want the safety that insurance provides. Yeah. So what does that customer want? And then what problem do they have? People buy things to overcome problems and pain. That's it. Uh, and, and depending on how disturbed they are in that process in terms of how likely they are to move forward more quickly. So what kind of problem do they have? How are they feeling about that? What do they believe about that? And how can you come alongside that customer with empathy and authority 
to help them solve that problem. If your messaging is structured within that framework, which everyone should be, and if it wasn't, if it was like that before, which is unlikely because most people's isn't, but if it was like that before, now it's time to, to go back and look at it and go, do our customers still want these things? Yep. Are these still the problems or have they adjusted at all? Is there anything else we need to add to the empathy that we provide to our clients to help them through this season? So messaging definitely needs to be adjusted in this season. And the biggest thing is it needs to be simplified and clarified. A lot of people, especially anything in the medical practice, one of the biggest mistakes that the medical doctors, dentists, you name it, anybody in the medical field, the biggest mistake they make is they try and go too technical on their marketing and website material. People don't care about how you get their cavity out. They just care that it was pain free and it was an enjoyable experience and that they're not hurting for days on end as a result of it. That's all they care about. They do not care about what kind of laser you have. They don't care about any of that stuff. They only care about what it's going to do for them. And if you're not talking about that, then you're missing the picture. If you're not talking about what your service is going to help them overcome from a risk and failure standpoint, then your message needs to be refined, clarified, and simplified. And it makes all the difference. I'm talking about two, three, sometimes five X leads that people are getting before just by cleaning up their messaging. So when you, when you look at that, Jay, where do you start? Or where would a dentist start? That they probably are looking and hearing this and saying, hey, I'm, I'm a little cluttered in my messaging. I mean, are you talking the website? Are you talking their, their social media presence? Where's a good place for these guys to start looking at trying to tighten this thing up? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, uh, one thing real quick before I address that, because it's important. What a lot of people do is they put the emphasis on the wrong things in their marketing. They're concerned about how they look. They want them to look really good, which is great. Appearance matters, right? I mean, I have a nice video studio I can be in for a podcast like this with, you know, good audio equipment and cool backgrounds and all that kind of stuff because I do a lot of these things. And so appearance matters. So what we always say is that design builds trust, but words are what matter. And so as it relates to the words that need in their messaging, the words need to be the foundation upon which everything else is built website, social media, flyers, I don't care what else it is that you're creating, everything else should be built around that messaging foundation. If people want to learn how to do that themselves, um, a great book that I absolutely love is called Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. Uh, absolutely like one of the top 10 marketing books I've ever read in my whole life. So much so that we really fully invested in his framework and with his team I personally have done training uh, with Donald Miller directly. Uh, and my team has done training with his team uh, so that we can become a story brand certified guide. And all that means is that our team is equipped to help other people get their messaging right um, and get it right as quickly as possible and, 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 and in a way that's actually going to produce results. So that book, Building a Story Brand, has been absolutely foundational for us. Uh, and he actually has a brand new book that just came out as well uh, called Marketing Made Simple. Uh, which is a great tag on to that. If you're the kind of person who wants to do it yourself, that's a great way to do it. If you want some help after that, or you just want somebody to do it for you, that's what our team does. So, so hit on, go a little deeper on that, Jay. So you mentioned the book and I agree, Donald Miller, the story brand guy, everything that, I mean, he is spot on in what he does. Um, so you mentioned, you know, maybe you can read the book, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Speak, speak to the dentist out there. Maybe the it doesn't even matter what size, just speak to the dentist. When do you know to stop doing it yourself or maybe don't even mess with it in the first place and go get help? How do you know when to make that transition and stop? You know, cause these are dentists. They're very technical right. at their trade. Yeah. Um, same thing for us as an accounting firm. It when really do you depends. know when to make that switch? It really depends on how big you are, right? If you're just like fresh out of college and you're just starting out and you want to work on your own little mark marketing plan to kind of get yourself going and put together some resources that might be a good place to kind of do it yourself. If you're an established practice and you've got a team of hygienists and maybe other dentists and you shouldn't be trying to write your own marketing. Now what you should be doing is having a team that is going to come alongside you because you know your business and you know your brand and, and, and the image and story that you want uh, your customers to be invited into better than anybody else. Um, because I think anybody that's listening to a show like this is probably of the mindset that they're not just some other dentist right? Like uh, there's something special about their practice There's something special that sets them apart of where they're at or how they care for people or their particular process or, or whatever. There's something that kind of sets them apart. 
and you need somebody to help come alongside you to help do that. So I would say anybody that has an established practice, it doesn't make sense to not have somebody do it for you. When we build out some of these basic messaging frameworks, some people will pay more money to go themselves to one of StoryBrand's workshops, um, which I'm not discouraging people to do that. They're great. I've actually taught at a few of them. Um, they'll, they'll pay to go to the workshops and they'll spend more money to pay to go to the workshop to learn how to do it themselves than they would have just paid to have us do it for them. And so I'm like, just let us do it for you and it will be much better and much easier for you in your life. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes perfect sense. And I think it really comes down to what we've talked about is you, you focus on what you're good at and you outsource your weaknesses. And, and so, so let's kind of pivot that conversation, Jay, because this is a legitimate thing you're probably hearing is, is, you know, during that 10 year bull run, everything was great. It's a lot easier to hire these professionals to, to, you know, work on your stuff. And, and now people are very cost conscious and, and they're concerned about keeping overhead in check. What would you say to people who are trying to understand the importance of coming through this, you know, post COVID-19 environment on the, on in relation to their messaging or marketing, their ad spend, those kind of mm -hmm. things, how should they be looking at, at marketing going forward? Is it where it was before or has it changed? Well, I think one of the big problems that people have, especially in situations like this, is a lot of people waste a lot of money on marketing that doesn't work. Or even worse, they waste a lot of, of their own time. There's nothing worse yeah. than wasting time. You waste money, you can go get more of it. You waste time, you can't get more of it. And so when, when money gets wasted on marketing, um, it, it could have been used more effectively. And the key to how it's used more effectively isn't about optimizing your social ads or improving your Google ads or updating your website, the first key is to having a good plan, right? And, and I mean, Dennis know this, right? You don't just come in somebody's mouth and be like, I think I'm gonna take those three teeth out and see if that solves the problem. Like, that's not how you operate. Like, you have to have a plan. You're gonna have a consultation. You're gonna talk through, where's the pain? What's happening? Tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, we're gonna get some x-rays, then we're gonna do this, then we're gonna do this. There's a clear plan of what's gonna happen. So with us, what we used to do back in the day, admittedly, which is what a lot of companies do, if somebody comes and say, hey, we want to promote our business and be like, great. So what do you want to do? Well, we want to do some social media and some stuff on Google. Okay, so we got this package for this and this package for that. Now what we do is we will not, um, we will not pitch a price for a marketing partnership or anything like that until we've done a plan up front. So we do a one priced fixed plan called a marketing blueprint up front. So they can know number one, their messaging is right. That, that, that their copy and layout for their website is right and that they have a good marketing plan uh, coming out of that. That is a blueprint, just like you would go get a blueprint to go build a building. I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're working on building a new house right now. Um, it's being done while we're on this RV trip. You don't just go start building a house without having a blueprint. You go to the architect, you get the blueprint done, then you go to the builder and you get that done. Well, we're the architect and the, and the builder, but we can, we can get the plan done first, make sure that looks good. And I think things like that are going to be valuable in this season as well when people aren't going to want to sign up for giant recurring plans. Um, they, they need something to kind of get their feet wet to go. Let me make sure this is right for us. And that's why we do the blueprints, although we've been doing them prior to the COVID. But the, the blueprint lays out that plan so you know that you're not wasting time and money on marketing that doesn't work. Mm. So talk, talk about a little, so a lot of times I'm talking to, to dentists and we're talking about marketing in particular. So we're looking at the financial side of things mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe they're a little tight in the beginning, but they're like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to spend on marketing, mm -hmm. you know, and they, and maybe they do it themselves. They go do some social media ad spend, or maybe they hire somebody like yourself, but they're so impatient, you know, maybe mm -hmm. one month, two months into it. They're like, I'm not getting any return. This isn't working out. What's the deal? H how do you, how do you respond to, to that? You know, I mean, I know it takes patience, but I mean, you probably hear that a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, I would say to that, number one, um, it comes down to misplaced expectations. So I would say the number one thing that destroys all relationships, marriages, friendships, coworkers, and clients or customers or patients in the dentist case uh, is misplaced expectations. So if I go in for a visit and I expect that these things are going to happen, it's going to cost this much and I'm going to get this result. But the dentist is going, okay, it's not anything like that. You're actually going to have to come back three more times. It's going to cost twice as much as you think it's going to. And it's going to hurt a lot more than you think it was too. If my expectations are, are too far apart, that's the valley that businesses go to die in. And so, you know, what's really important for us from doing a marketing 
partnership, which is why we do those plans up front, is we set those expectations. You cannot start a new marketing plan and just expect that leads are going to start flowing in 30 days later. They're just not. Like, it's just not going to work that way. Not a good long-term plan. Because I don't think anybody's building their business to see how it's going to last over the next couple of months. You know, I have a podcast called Building a Business That Lasts. And the idea around that podcast is how do we build a business that's going to last, not for months, but for years and for decades. And how do we build that business without being worn out and stressed out and ready to quit? And so, you know, having the right plan in place, but ultimately having expectations and alignment going in, I mean, ask those questions when you're working with somebody on the marketing side, hey, how long is it going to take for us to see real results? For us, usually the first quarter, realistically, first, you know, three months is a lot of setup, a lot of build out, a lot of planning, but it all depends on where somebody's at. Because if they already have really good design and they already have really good messaging, we're just tweaking some of those things, it might be a lot quicker because they've already kind of got the foundational pieces done. And I relate this to building a lot, but I talked about having the blueprint up front. Well, then you got to lay the foundation and do the plumbing. Well, it's not very exciting. You can't live in that house yet. And then you got to frame it and you got to put a roof on it and now you can paint the walls. Problem is people are worried about painting the walls before they get the foundation done in their marketing. If they don't get the foundation done right, they're just building a, a, a house on a sandy ground and that doesn't end up very well. Well, and you probably have some situations where you have a half built house too. You have a plan yeah. that's, that's laid out, but it is going to take some, some effort. It's going to take right. some energy and effort and brand building and, and being consistent in your messaging is not, not easy. You know, mm -hmm. and, and that plan, I'm sure, sets those expectations as well as to the participation a dentist is going to have to have to really get a true ROI for their, their message and their marketing. Yeah, and marketing is a lot about testing, too, and that makes people uncomfortable, you know, because you got to try stuff to see what works and what doesn't. And sometimes it's not a matter of something not working. It's just you might try two different ad sets, for example, and one performs incredibly well and one just kind of performs kind of well. But where do I want to put the money? I mean, I want to max out the one that performed incredibly well, right? And so that, just to get enough data sometimes, if somebody doesn't have good data on their marketing engines right now to know how many uh, visitors does it take to me for me to acquire a certain number of leads, to acquire a certain number of customers, if I don't know what that transition is, we talk about taking somebody from a stranger to a promoter. So they're a stranger, then they're a visitor, then they're a lead, then they're a customer, then they're a promoter or a raving fan. Many yeah. people know that book. Um, and so if we don't know what those numbers are up front, it takes some time, at least 30 days, just to get enough data to see what people are doing when they see that ad. Are they clicking on it? Are they stopping to scroll? Are they not clicking on it? Which one do they click on more? When they do click on it, when they come to your page, how likely are they to actually fill out a form and make an appointment? And then of those people, how many of those actually turn into customers? It takes time to figure out all that data. But once you have it figured out, now you got a real powerful engine on your hands because you got an engine you can turn the dial up on or turn the dial back on and you go, all right, time's for some more visitors. They're going to acquire a certain number of leads that are going to create a certain number of customers. Now all of a sudden we have kind of an automated workflow, but you're right. A lot of people are not patient enough to get there. And so then what they do instead is they hop from one company to the next and they've tried four different marketing companies. And so when somebody comes to me and they're like, well, we've tried three different companies and you know, marketing just doesn't seem to work for us. I'm like, mm, that makes me nervous. Like, how long did you stay with them? How long? Because they might have been bad, but I doubt three in a row were bad. I mean, surely <laughs> one of them good, right? Like, we're not all that bad. Um, right. And so, those are things too. Like, I encourage people if you're with somebody, ask good questions. Like, how many, when do you think I'm going to be generating good leads for this website? That's a good question to ask. How long is it going to take to do that? And, and how many leads uh, are, are we going to get? And then, as you as the business need to know when you get 10 leads in, how many of those turn into a customer? Is it one? Is it five? That makes a big difference. And the other thing that's really important that I find, I'm sure you all deal with some of this with KPI data with customers, is, is figuring out uh, what the lifetime value of that customer is too. Like what is a customer worth? Because if I go in for a cleaning and it's $75 or whatever it is, I'm not worth $75. I'm worth every dollar that you collect from me over the lifetime of that relationship. And if I'm there for 10 years and have all kind of other stuff, then I could be worth thousands and thousands of dollars. That matters a lot in your marketing because if a customer is worth $75, man, it's hard for me to run ad campaigns to acquire that customer and it really be a good ROI without doing it internally. But if that customer is worth 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, 30,000 over the lifetime, now all of a sudden I got a lot more flexibility to go, how, hey, how can we acquire more of those customers for you? 
Yeah. And, and in, in the post COVID-19, that number maybe has changed and, and you know, yeah. people, uh, patient spending habits maybe have changed. And that's something that, that having good data and seeing what's really speaking to people is, is going to be important. So, so let me ask you this, Jay, uh, a lot of the dentists we deal with, I mean, they're in, they're in pretty crowded marketplaces as far as dentistry and, um, you know, they're competing with a lot of, of other uh, practices. So how do they, in that, in kind of a crowded marketplace, how can people cut through the clutter, cl- cut through the white noise and really stand out and, and find those ideal patients and speak to them? Yeah, I'll give you a couple of specific things that are really helpful. Number one, like spend money on a good photographer. It's not going to cost that much. A couple hundred bucks, get a photographer to come in and take pictures of smiling, happy people your team, but not just like the stock picture. I hate when medical providers just want to take these pictures, like everybody's standing in like this, like <laughs> high school graduation photo. And I'm like, that's not what you need. You need somebody like shaking somebody's hand when they come in. Well, maybe we can't shake hands anymore, but you know what I'm saying? Like you need that, like, hey, welcome. We're glad you're here. Like, come on in. You know, like we're going to take good care of you. You need, you need to create that image and atmosphere that's not stock photos. Spend the extra money to have a professional photographer do that. And even better, spend the extra money to have a professional videographer shoot some shots of your office, get somebody to kind of walk in and out of your office, like create some of those atmosphere elements and they can, they can create a lot more impact and feel a lot more personal because a lot of people use stock photos and it's just not as, I mean, how many times have you seen the same dental flyer in your mailbox with like the same girl smiling on it? You're like, I've seen this for like eight times for eight different <laughs> dentists. It doesn't stand out at all. And then the other thing is what we talked about earlier, which is make the messaging about the customer. Make it about what they want, what their problems are, and then how you have empathy and authority. What, what gives you the authority to come alongside them and help them solve it? And the next step in that framework I didn't talk about earlier is give them a clear plan. What's that going to look like? Number one, come in for your uh, consultation, however much that's going to cost. Maybe it's free. If you've got a free consultation, great. Come in for your free consultation. Number two, review your custom plan. Uh, number three, uh, live with your best smile ever. You know, or finally have the smile you always dreamed of something something that is going to give them a clear plan and then call them to action get them to actually go do something um and not leave it ambiguous on your website if you do some of those things in your marketing uh, you'll see exponential results over those who do not do those things and they will help differentiate you when you understand that it's not about you it's about the customer and that's where the real magic is yeah, I'm telling you, if I'm a dentist right now, I'm jotting down those tips exactly that you just said. I mean, as a business owner, I'm jotting them down too. I mean, that's <laughs> it's it's all about the messaging. And, and going yeah. back to what you said, the, the whole story brand thing, it's so easy to talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, me, and this is what I do, and this is how I can help you. The messaging and creating that story is how you can help that customer and uh, be the guide and not the hero is just huge. Yeah, and, and, I think and I'll give you a perfect example. I'll give you a perfect example of how I did this earlier. You specifically asked me to tell my story. Okay. It's very easy for me to just start talking about me. I requires discipline for me to say what I said instead, which is I understand that growing a business can be really hard. Marketing is confusing and expensive. We make it clear and effective so you can get attention and acquire customers. That's exactly what I said when you told me to tell my story. Why do I know that? Because that's our one liner. That's a piece of material that we have in our messaging. That when somebody says, hey, Jay, what do you do? I said, well, you know how marketing can be confusing and expensive? And they go, well, yeah. Well, we help make it clear and effective so people can get attention and acquire customers. That sounds way better than, well, oh, I'm a CEO and founder of a digital agency. What's a digital (laughs) agency? Well, you know, it's kind of complicated. We do all these things. No, 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 no. Even if, even from a dentist perspective, right? You could just say, I'm a dentist, but how boring is that? Like to say that like that is not interesting. What if yeah. you said instead, you know, a lot of people have problems with their teeth and we help people uh, with dental services. So they have the best, healthiest smile they've ever had in their whole life. Something like that. That's a very different thing. And now instead of me just saying, I'm a dentist, I'm talking about changing people's lives. Yeah. What, and what it's not just that happens? though. It's not just that though, Jay, is what you also have is that becomes ingrained in your culture. Mm-hmm. So when, when, when you teach or when you understand what your one liner is, that can't just stay with the CEO. I mean, right. everybody in that, in that business needs to be able to say that. So instead of saying I clean teeth, you know, they're saying exactly what your one liner is and, and that spreads that messaging even more. And, and it's really engaging for people to hear that even if your uh, non-owners are, are spreading that same message. So that, that one liner, that's a great takeaway. That's something that think- every prep should have. Think about something like an orthodontist. Instead of saying, well, I'm the orthodontist, that just sounds painful. I don't want to like, bring back memories of my braces. Those were painful days. 
and, and it sounds expensive because I have five children. And so what if instead I said, well, we help people transform their smiles so they can have the confidence they've always dreamed of. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Oh, well, that's, that's something very different than just I'm an orthodontist. It's not. It's the exact same thing. But you're, but you're revealing that why behind the, what you're doing because you're not just doing it so that people have clean teeth. Like, yeah. And, and that's, that's the difference. And when you can communicate that when you're messaging, that will separate you in a market of people who are saying the exact same things because they got it from some mass dental marketing company. Yeah. Jay, those one-liners just roll off your tongue, man. I could start naming <laughs> industries and you could just start spitting them out. I mean, that's, that's just, my that's job. Just awesome. and, I mean, that's your job. He's a copywriter and, too, right? And, and a lot of <laughs> dentists out there right now are probably scratching their head, maybe saying first, what's a one-liner? And then maybe if they know what a one-liner is, they probably don't have one. So that's at least a start to, to tell your story is you've got to yeah. have a one-liner. And let me give you just a quick framework for that for people who are like, don't hear what I put together in that because you can do this very easily. It's just three specific sections, okay? As short as you possibly can make it so that you can memorize and other people on your team can. Starts with a problem. What is the problem you help people overcome? Has the middle of part of the solution. And then the last part is the outcome. So for me, marketing is confusing and expensive. That's the problem. We make it clear and effective. That's the solution. So you can get attention and acquire customers. That's the outcome, right? So same thing with dental. I might have some kind of particular problem over here. People are tired of living with, um, you know, t uh, mouth pain. Um, now, see, now you're saying I could roll them off. Ah, I, you. I don't want to give them away because then somebody's going to copy my one-liner from a dentist. That's right. and then, you'll, then everybody listening. <laughs> everybody will have the same one-liner. One <laughs> we don't want that. So leave with the problem you think is most prevalent for your audience and who you're dealing with because everybody has different customer bases, different areas, different demographics, all that. Leave with the problem. Second, what's the solution you provide? What's the outcome? Short enough so that you can memorize it and your whole team can memorize it. That's awesome. Mm. That, 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 guys, guys, that's a that's a gold nugget right there. I mean, that's a great gift, Jay. Great, great job on that. The one-liners are so easy; they're free, and, and you can internalize it and make it your own. And it and you can get where it just rolls off your tongue. That, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, Jay, tell us uh, tell us how our viewers can uh, can get a hold of you. How can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. You can find uh, more about the agency that I run here uh, at designextensions.com. Or if you want to see more from me personally, I have a podcast and a book and all kinds of other things that you can check out. Just go to jowenlive.com. So designextensions.com is the agency and jowenlive.com is my personal brand. Love to connect with you. And I'm going to go one more on that. So you mentioned the book. You just flew over that really fast, but yeah. hit hit on the book because uh, you, you sent me that book and I read it in like, literally, I'm not saying this, a day. I mean, it is a great book. Hit on what the objective or what that book does. Yeah, the book uh, is titled The Same as the Podcast, which is Building a Business That Lasts. And the subtitle is Without Sacrificing Family um, because I have a dream bigger than just building a business. I want to build a whole life uh, that I'm proud to look back on many years from now. I think a lot of other business owners want the same. Uh, but the problem is that many business owners feel stressed out and worn out and ready to quit. And so I thought, man, I, I have now built this agency for 20 years. We've grown year over year, top and bottom line, every single year for 20 years in a row. And I want to be able to share that uh, those ideas with other people. So I just kind of break down in the book um, things that have helped me across all those areas about starting a business, growing a business, and then making it last. Um, and you can get that book uh, online at my website, jowenlive.com. Yeah. Jay, we appreciate you, man. We, uh, we appreciate everything you're doing. And uh, we'll put all your information here in the show notes. And guys, go check out the book at the very least. Absolutely. It is a great read. Um, but Jay, we appreciate it. Um, have fun on this trip. I heard maybe a YouTube uh, channel. Yeah, might, might so I'll definitely, do, I'll definitely do an Insta story along the way. So if you're on Instagram, uh, Instagram.com slash J O N, I'll have some crazy adventures if you want a distraction from all the uh, insanity <laughs> in the news right now. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty on there. And then we're think we're talking about we're going to do a lot of video shooting. We're, we're probably will edit it all together. Um, we're going to do a channel called Officially Owen. So all kinds of stuff awesome. happening. Yeah. Jay, that's awesome, man. Appreciate the time. I know you're a busy guy. Have a safe trip, and uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, guys.